So up until now, this is where the EGIO web server lived. So this is actually a pretty decent chassis, and I'm certainly not going to get rid of it. It's super compact, but it has this cute little power supply. It can actually hold a low-profile graphics card. So it's actually pretty cool. But the web server is just that. It's a web server, and it doesn't do anything but host the web server. So it doesn't actually need a chassis like this. Instead, we're going to be using this chassis. Remember this guy? And if you don't, it's from a SteamOS build I did a few months ago. I'll link the video somewhere in a card in this general vicinity or in the description or something. But we're going to repurpose this guy. Now all in all, this case made a pretty crappy SteamOS build, but it should be absolutely perfect for a web server because a web server won't get very hot, and that was the main problem that this case had. Its ability to dissipate heat was pretty damn limited considering there aren't fans or even places for fans anywhere. Here are the guts of the web server. So the processor, believe it or not, is my old, old, old AMD A6 6400. Yeah, this is a freaking old processor. I've had this thing since 2011, it says. That's when it was made, I think. I don't know. I, I might have had it since like 2012 or 13 or something, but I feel like I've had this processor forever. And because all this computer will be doing is serving up a web server, it deserves but a single stick of RAM. And so here's how the web server looks with the motherboard and everything in. Things look a little bit cramped, but still all right. All right, we got this thing plugged in. Time to see if it works. Hey, the fan's spinning, that's a good sign. So I just put the hard drive in. It literally goes in right there. You could probably put two in there actually, but we just have one regular hard drive. Everything else is plugged in, the processor's going, it's rocking and rolling. And this is how she looks with the cover on. So yeah, pretty cool. Now from here, we're gonna drop from the BIOS into the operating system. Now remember that all we did was move the guts from one chassis to another chassis. So the operating system is already installed, all the software is already installed and ready to rock and roll. So let's just go ahead and drop into it. So Ubuntu is the operating system of choice. It is in fact Ubuntu 16.4, so it is the latest LTS. Now the hard drive itself is encrypted, and honestly I can't remember why I decided to encrypt it, but Let's go ahead and un unencrypt it and drop into the operating system. Now I have system D configured to drop me straight into multi-user mode, so we never actually see a UI because the GUI isn't set up. Now it's easy enough to start. I mean, Ubuntu with Unity and LightDM is all installed and ready to go, but I have no use for it right now, so we're not gonna use it. We're just gonna go straight into the terminal. So we've reached TTI1, and I don't know why the prompt went away. That was kind of weird, but now from here, I'm going to want to get actual website. So there's nothing here we need to actually pull it down. So we'll do git clone and we'll pull it down just like that. And then we'll CD into the directory that was cloned. And since it's an Ember app, we're going to need to install all the node dependencies. So we'll do npm install. And Ember also makes use of Bower. So we'll want to do Bower install. And then we'll want to build the site for production. So We'll do ember build environment equals production. And then finally, we'll just do ember serve. And node is starting the web server. Notice how it's running on port 4200. That's because I'm not actually hosting the actual web server right now as of this video. I would need to do a couple extra things because since it runs on port 80, it needs elevated permissions. And I don't really want to do that in this video. So now that the web server is going, we're going to do something else. We'll need to access TTY2, log in as me again. Helps if I put in the right password. Now I built a Discord bot because we make use of BooBot and BooBot is going away. So I went ahead and created a Discord bot to kind of do all of the same things that BooBot used to do. And it's kind of a work in progress. But anyways, that bot is going to be hosted on this server as well because the server can really do a whole lot more than just serve the web. I mean, it's got, you know, an AMD APU and it's got a pretty good amount of RAM, so why not put it to use? Now, there are only a couple node modules that we need. Whoops, so we need to do npm install and pull those down. This bot doesn't use Bower, so all we need to do is npm install. And then we do node index. Helps if I spell it right. Index. 
And there you go, the bot is running. Now there's no feedback here because I haven't told it to provide any feedback, but if we go to the Discord, you can see that EG bot is sitting here. Uh, I don't know why the hell his role is Nightbot. So the only command he has right now is cat. There it is. Oh. <laughs> wow, that must have been one risque cat picture. Let's try again. There we are. Yeah, that was strange. So the bot is running on the server. This is my workstation computer, so I'm recording off, off that computer. But you can see that the bot is running over there. The website is technically running over there. Uh, but that's it. So there, now you've seen the server.